Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics. The Federal High Court, Abuja, has ordered that the ex-chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Maina, be remanded at the Kujé Correctional Center pending the conclusion of his trial. The former chairperson of the pension tax force, who had been absent in court on multiple occasions, was declared wanted when the court believed he had jumped bail. He was recently arrested in Niger Republic and, as we speak, he has been arrested and extradited to Nigeria. And joining us to discuss this, we have uh, a legal practitioner, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Mr. Tunde Kolawale, good day. Good evening, my brother. And good to Thanks have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, okay, let's start from this angle. Um, I, I don't know why a whole lot of people are so excited to hear that, oh, he has been arrested, he has been extradited, extradited to Nigeria, now he's in prison. What does that say about the expectation of Nigerians when it comes to justice? Well, uh, I want to think that um, it's a reflection of the total disenchantment with the corruption that is prevalent in all areas of our life. Whether you talk about the executive arm of government, whether you talk about the legislator, or whether you talk about the judiciary, everywhere is leaking with corruption. So when a corrupt person is arraigned in court and he absconds or jumps bills, and he is rearrested. The enthusiasm in the land is uh, a reflection or a manifestation or the desire of the average Nigerian person to see that people who are engaged in all these right, corrupt activities do not escape by justice. Okay, uh, another issue, and trust me, irrespective of what happens, there are still loads of pessimists who say that uh, isn't this another drama? Haven't we seen? I, I hope the people will not be made to just be normal spectators. We will see this man remember the drama around him when he seems to have a whole lot of backing from people in government. Absolutely, you are correct that we have seen a lot of theatrics surrounding the arrest, prosecution, and trial of Rashid Mena. In fact, it could be said that he has been playing this kind of um, Robin Hood game <laughs> on the entire Nigerian nation, on the Nigerian judiciary. If that being the case, I mean, you and I will recollect the effort that was put into arresting him by the EFCC when he was alleged initially to have committed the infractions of corruption. He took a combination of the DSS, of the police, of the Interpol, and the EFCC to be able to apprehend him and then um, get him to be arraigned in court. And I mean, I mean to be investigated and then arraigned in court. And you also recollect that immediately he was arrested by the EFCC and was being investigated, he equally absconded. He ran away. And he also took a lot of efforts for him to be reapprehended. And then broke, I mean, before he was rearrested, he suddenly resurfaced in the presidency with a promotion. He became a director in the presidency. And the Nigerian people began to wonder. I, a man who is being investigated for corruption, will now find his way into the presidency, not just uh, in the presidency. He also rose from the level of a deputy director to a substantive director in the presidency. And it was from there that he was um, rearrested and then taken to court. And before you know it, he was granted bail and then he absconded. For me, I think the Robin Hood game that Mena has been playing on the Nigerian judiciary 
on the Nigerian justice system, on the entire Nigerian people, is a manifestation, a culture of impunity that we have also always seen with the average Nigerian air life. It is a manifestation, a graphic demonstration that the justice system is not there to take care of both the tiger and the fly. That most times the tigers, because they have the means, because they have the connection, because they have uh, all the way with them to survive the course of justice, they have always gotten away with whatever instructions or with whatever infractions that they are, are said to have engaged them in. It's a culture of impunity that started a long time ago and that does not seem that it will abate in the nearest, um, in the nearest future. Hmm. So if you say that this is a drama, you might be correct, or you are correct, I would say, and the drama too might be geared towards achieving some goals, which goals may not be far away from escaping the course of justice. Hmm. Because it is not impossible that after this rearrangement, the man who is too short for him might begin to file an application in court that he has not gotten fair hearing hmm. with regards to his being sent to jail for not being able to produce the person that he stood short for. Mena himself may reapply for bail, and if the court denies him or refuses him bail, he could also raise the issue that is not okay. getting fair trial. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chile Kalaole, like you lawyers who always say us, let's not preempt the court now, but let's, uh, look, at, let's look at the but, substance of what the judiciary seems to be doing because some would say this is judiciary fighting back to bring back his honor that irrespective of who is involved, justice is blind and they will do everything possible. Is that a clear signal for the political class? Or this is just a selected or selective justice, as we always say. Honestly, I I will not see it as a kind of redemption for the Nigerian judiciary. To the best of my knowledge, and with my years of uh, or in practice, I have seen that our judiciary have always tried their very level best to make sure that justice is done to all manners of men. The challenge that we have always had has always come from the executive arm of government that will not obey court orders, that will not enforce court orders. The challenge that we have always seen has always come from our airlines who have enormous resources at their disposal and who use these resources to provide the course of justice, to bend the justice system, to procure judgment that is favorable so Mr. Kolawale, yeah. if you say they procure judgment, this is yeah. not done without the connivance of some members of the judiciary, if you agree with me. Just a few days ago, a report was released by ICPC, you know, Absolutely. making judiciary top in the chart when it comes to corruption. And they listed about 10 judges who have uh, taken about 9 billion or 10 billion naira. So don't you think that, uh, like some of your colleagues said on this show, that this is, a, this is a reflection of a decayed society. But it is more worrisome to know that uh, the last hope of the masses is also caught in the web. Well, let me, I am going to be forthright. Good. A nation will get the kind of judiciary that it deserves. We will be fooling ourselves to think that when the whole society is rotting, the judiciary is going to be an exception. Hmm. All over the world, when a branch of government is corrupt, it has a way of permeating all the other branches of government. So that might be the reason why we are seeing the kind of report that we are seeing and the corruption that are being highlighted in the Nigerian justice system. But be that as it may, 
If you read that report very, very critically, it will be seen that the bulk of cases of corruption that was highlighted in that report has to do mostly with political cases, with politicians, with election petitions. That is an area in which our allies have always had a do or die approach. It is an area in which the political class have always felt that they could always purchase judgment. And if the political allies are shadowed or have the kind of resources that they do have at their disposal, chances are that there is no system, that there is no structure, that there is no institution that they cannot corrupt with the kind of resources at their disposal. If we are going to be helping the judiciary to cleanse its own audience table, what is required to be done is to ensure that the political class are denied or don't have access to the kind of resources that they do have now, which they are not bound to account for. That has been the challenge. I am not saying by this that there has never been corruption in the Nigerian judiciary. That if under the military, you will recollect that the military government of those days set up the Kayo DSO panel to look at corruption in the judiciary. And I can recollect that I think as much as 24 judges were indicted by the Kayo DSO panel and different recommendations were made to punish those judges. Some were recommended for dismissal, some for demotion, some for retirement. At the end of the day, that report never got implemented because our allies also subverted the implementation of the report. A white paper was produced, but the white paper was never implemented as it got the recommendations that the Coyote Shop Panel made. You will also recollect that when the present administration was still serious about the fight against corruption, there were raids on the homes of some judges, and a lot of startling revelations came from those uh, raids. There were judges that piles and piles of naira and dollars and pounds sterling were found under their bed. Some were seen or were found to be carrying three international passports and so many other things that you are not expected to see in the other chambers of the judiciary were really seen. What has become of the findings of the DSS, of the, of the state security service, with regards to that raid that were carried out on judges on the judges' home? Hmm. You could say that uh, nothing serious has really come out of it. Yes, a few of the judges were prosecuted, okay. but the bulk of them are back on the bench now. Wow. They went. Okay. Mr. I, 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 I must yeah. say that this is actually a forthright comment coming from a member of the judiciary uh, giving us some home truth. But our time is really gone. But let me just give you one minute to come back to All the right. topic again. And yeah. uh, do you think keeping him in Kujé prison till the trial ends is enough punishment for someone who jumped bail? And he didn't just jump bail, he ran out of the country. Do you think that was enough? Well, there is nothing the judiciary can do with regards to that until a man is uh, arraigned, tried, and convicted. You cannot begin to dish out punishment to him. Uh, what the law prescribes as of today is that if a man is a flight risk, if a man is not likely to be ready to answer to his crime okay. in the court of competent jurisdiction, the only thing the court can do is to remind him the correctional center until his trial is, uh, is uh, concluded. Okay. But what we have found over time is that when people are reminded of some of these correctional services, they begin to live like princes and princesses, like kings in those prisons. They are not treated like the ordinary prisoners. ACs will be installed in their rooms, 24-hour uh, silent generators, 
and then look at people like uh, even uh, Boko Haram terrorists and commanders who mm. have been convicted. Mm. When you go to Kuche prison, they are all living like kings and queens okay. in those prisons now. Mr. So, they may uh, not you're... be reminded in there, but I don't see it as having as punishment for him. In fact, in the nearest, uh, in the distant time, Kuche prison will become a mecca for our life in which everybody will be treating wow. to pay obeisance so made wow. now in his prison custody. Wow, Mr. Tunde Kolaoli, uh, you've raised some more serious issues that is worth discussing. And uh, we'll keep in touch with you. We'll keep in touch with this uh, dimension you brought in into this conversation. But I'm afraid this is where we'll call it a wrap on your intervention on this matter. Thank you once again, Tunde Kolaoli. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll take a short break. And when we return after this short breather, I'll be giving you my take. Here is my take. So much drama on the former Pencom boss. No doubt he's well connected. But this is the or but is this the time for the law of the land to be tested that it does not discriminate between the rich and the poor? So far, the judiciary has risen up to the occasion, especially Justice Okun Abang. However, it is not yet Uhuru, as this case is being monitored to see justice being done and seen to be done. Would there be fresh applications for bail? It may not matter. Beyond Mena, let the high and the low know that the long arm of the law will catch up with them when they err on the side of the law. And here is my take on tonight's discussion. Plus Politics returns on Monday with another fresh set of discussions. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladende, saying bye for now.